Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How They Do That. Well this week we catch up with Christopher Barr and we were on location actually. He just finished up a shoot and was on his way for another shoot. And he had just a few minutes for us to chat outside. And so during that time we talked a little bit about his beginnings, his adventures as a photojournalist and surviving in the jungles literally and how he made it back to Los Angeles and started up his commercial and uh, portrait photography studio, celebrity photography. And so we just talked about all kinds of things. And so here's a little bit of that conversation with myself and Christopher on location here in Phoenix, Arizona. All right, Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. And I, I know we just got you after a shoot. It looks like you had a lot of fun. Um, but let's talk about, for people who don't know who you are, give us a sort of a, an overall view of the kind of work that you're doing these days. We do a lot of editorial, a lot of commercial, um, a, a lot of corporate work. Uh, my, my business is sort of compartmentalized because I'm a, a generalist. Um, I kind of keep the nuts and bolts, corporate stuff, kind of separated from the, the higher-end portraiture, the editorials, the personalities, that, that kind of thing. Um, but I am I have a very schizophrenic business model. It's <laughs> all over true. the place. That's true. I mean, I've seen you have uh, like some very uh, nice corporate photos of like a CEOs and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. there's Scarlett Johansson. Mm -hmm. And you know, you also have a, a background as a photojournalist. You've been all over the and place. I started, that's where I started. Yeah. yeah, so let's talk about that. Because yeah. I hear rumors that you swam the Amazon or something crazy. <laughs> Uh, it was pretty. It was pretty crazy. My younger days, um, I was. I worked the Pacific Rim, so I was. I spent a lot of time in South America, um, all through the the Pacific, South Pacific Islands, um, a lot of Southeast Asia. Um, I um, I got smuggled over borders uh, uh, and uh, um, a lot of jungle work. There was for for several years, for a good five year period, I I had kind of a reputation as like a. A jungle specialist, I, and I, it wasn't anything other than I happened to spend a lot of time in the jungle, so I got, I got used to that kind of shooting. And, and, and so how do you get from uh, here? You are jungle specialist, being smuggled around. Literally, you've been smuggled around, um, getting really sick in the middle of the jungles. Yeah, yeah. To uh, being an established celebrity photographer and having studios in Los Angeles uh -huh. and here today being very uh -huh. successful, uh, how do you get from from A to to C? What, what happened there? Um, it's, a, it's a long road. <laughs> it's a long road. A lot, a lot happened. A lot of transitions. I, I got out of photojournalism, um, and and that traveling on the road lifestyle, um, in in a photojournalistic sense, because I still am on the road quite a bit. Um, um, I got sick in the middle of the jungle, and I got really sick. Yeah, dysentery. Is that right? It, yeah, well, uh, something like that. That was one of the things I had. <laughs> but um, I was on my back for days alone in the, in the middle of the Amazon. And um, at the time, I seriously didn't think I was going to get out. And I was okay with it. You know, I, I, I had peace with the whole idea. And um, as it turned out, I managed to get out of my hammock. And uh, um, I trudged my way out of the jungle, and I did, you know, swim down a river. I had a raft made out of. Um, and this is like you, solo man, survivor guy, <laughs> dysentery. It sick. was it was crazy. I had yeah. I had a I had a, a guide and a, a translator with me, okay. um, who, who was not of a great deal of help, um, but we we worked together and uh, we uh, uh, we made a raft out of Brazilian hardwoods that don't <laughs> float and uh, uh, um, things that you wish you would have known yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> right. Something like that. And we got out, we, you know, we got out and, and when I got back, um, I was a mess. And the only thing I was really sure of is that I didn't want to do it anymore. I got it out of my system. You know, that, that wonderlust, that, that excitement, that spontaneity, that not knowing what you're going to shoot and what's going to come at you. And I was born and raised in L.A. And uh, so I, I kind of settled back into that. And it was like starting uh, again. I had a certain reputation, but it was with a certain genre of clientele. So you didn't just go to L.A. out of the blue. You had people that you knew there, people that, you know, you grew up there. I grew right? up there. Yeah. yeah. So it's... Um, you know, one of the things that we get questions a lot from this show and other shows mm -hmm. is, you know, how do I get to New York or Los Angeles or Miami or Chicago where this, mm -hmm. the industry is happening and start a business? 
and you know you didn't just show up you know I get asked this question a lot um, um, and my, you know, my personal belief is that there is no formula there is just there's no formula um, uh, I think taking taking great pictures is the booby prize of what we do it, it's not that difficult to take great pictures I think that I think that this is a people business I think um, the energy you pull out of out of people if you're shooting breathers is the most is is the most important thing. And um, you know we can create environments with beautiful lighting and uh, great locations and uh, uh, you know the best gear. Um, but if if the person you're shooting who um, is not a professional, for example. Um, and their their comfort level in front of the camera is is low, or, or they're intimidated by the experience. Then the challenge is uh, not creating a, a a beautifully lit photograph of somebody who's flatlining energetically. Right. Um, I'm I'm a big believer that um, great energy or spontaneity or a genuine personality coming out of somebody um, can always save a, a poor a poor photograph, a poorly lit shot. But the vice versa is not. Is, is not true. Yeah, it's the subject that matters and you can right. see, you know, especially for photojournalism, there are a lot of pictures that technically are really not very good. Mm -hmm. Think of the D-Day invasion shots. Right. But what they documented and what was happening the moment. was so dramatic. Yeah. Yeah, that they're, you know, historical photos. They it's, mean something. They're yeah. power, they're, they're, there's an inherent power in that. I think we all come at it from different roads. The relationships we create along the way, the trust we engender in our, in our clients. Um, it's very, I think this business is very familial, and and clients like um, working with people that they can trust. That's predictable. They know what they're going to get. When you dump thousands of dollars in somebody's lap, you you don't get a lot of excuses. The light, right. oh, the light wasn't right today, or 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 the subject was in a bad mood, or um, any number of a mirror. It doesn't it doesn't yeah, wash. It does not work. There's too many people involved. There's there's too much. Um, uh, too much time and energy goes into the production. A person who's been in the business a short time can't possibly take on a big production. It's too much stress, and it's too much. You have to have a track record. So it's in, in many ways, it's it's building that track record, one step, one shoot at a time, treating each shoot as the most important one, and and uh, um, and just kind of raising your comfort level in terms of what you can do. Um, and it doesn't have to be a big production shoot. It can be a small um, production shoot. You, you, it's, it can be a very intimidating environment, particularly when things are new and unfamiliar. And I think in many ways, it's just a question of becoming familiar with the, with the animal. So when you're working now, you're not cameras, lenses, like what's in your, your camera bag in a normal shoot? Um, I, I, carry, I'm, I carry a very lean um, bag with me. Um, I, uh, a couple of Mark IIs, Canon 5D Mark IIs, um, a 70 to 200 2.8, um, a 20 to 35 2.8, and a 51 4. And that's it. Anything else I need, I rent, and I rent a lot. Um, I carry uh, half a dozen speed lights with me. I carry uh, uh, th uh, three monoblocks. I, I, um, I've used them all. I'm using a uh, Paul Buff equipment right now. I love it. It takes a beating. It does a job. Yeah. It travels well. Um, I mean, all my gear, it gets beaten up at the airports more than anywhere else. Right. So it has to, it, you know, it has to s survive that kind of environment. Yeah, that's why I love renting that kind of stuff. Well, um, before we run out of time, I want to talk about another thing that you do that I think is pretty spectacular, and that's your, your intern program. Mm -hmm. Now, um, one of the things that, that I find interesting, you know, I get emails pretty much every single day of somebody saying, hey, I'll come work for you for free, you just mm -hmm. let me tag along, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. for the most part, we say no mm -hmm. um, to 99% of those people because mm -hmm. we can't be teaching while we're, you know, mm -hmm. people paying us money to do something, I don't mm -hmm. want to say, okay, here's how you plug it in right, and do right. this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so how, how do you do that kind of stuff successfully? How do you have that, that mentoring and internship program? Well, um, first of all, you have to want to do it. Yeah, it, 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 it has to fulfill you in some way. And I, I enjoy mentoring. I enjoy teaching. Um, I've done it for a great deal of my career. On bigger productions, you, you know, your first and seconds are always professionals. And right. the interns you know, take care of the stuff, but just being on a set, watching how things go, acclimating to the environment, 
um, these, these you, know, you get the calls and there's a hunger for that, yeah. there's a need for that and for, um, it's like assisting. It accelerates, it accelerates the process. There are some really good photographers that have interned for me out there right now, some of whom are competing with me now and I'm very proud of that. I think, I think it's great. Um, and, but you have to have the time, it's an investment. Um, I, it pays off in many ways because once you, once you train an intern a certain way and they, they're used to working with you, then it goes very, very smoothly. Uh, I love doing it and uh, um, um, it, it, it does great things in my life. It brings great people into my life. It great, brings fantastic energy into my life. I get incredible creative ideas from them. You know, a, a mind that isn't kind of like formed fully sees things differently freshly um, and and the beauty of our business is um, it's not about the box it's not about the glass it's about the person behind it right. and um, they bring they bring these great ideas and great perspectives to me and and that's that's worth a great deal it's worth that's a great phenomenal. deal so uh, we're out of time but let's uh, tell people where they can find your work your website if anybody's interested in the, the uh, internship I know that's a local Phoenix program but uh -huh. Some people might be coming to school here. You never know. Yeah, well, we're you know we're online. I, I get a lot of people sending me images for critiquing and, and questions and that kind of thing, which is you know great. Um, on my portfolio, my portfolio is www.christopherbar.com, and um, uh, the blog is uh, christopherbar.blog. And it's a cool blog because, like you said, there's all kinds of uh, critiques. It's and frenetic. It's schizophrenic. It's all over the place. I, awesome. uh, um, we, we do call for assistance through it. We do critiques through it. Um, people post their work. For, it's, a, it's, a commun it's an interesting community, and uh, um, I, I enjoy it a lot. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. Well, I had a lot of fun talking to Chris, and the interesting thing is he's been in business for so many years and had so many uh, good experiences that we just couldn't fit it all into this interview. And so I highly recommend that you go and look at his blog specifically because he's blogging all the time and giving updates on photo shoots and things that he's doing and critiques on other photographers' work. And he's talking to beginning photographers to help them get started in the business. So it's a great resource for anybody that's interested to learn more about Christopher's work. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this episode of How They Do That. Remember, if you have somebody that you'd like to see on the show, you can send your suggestion to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center, where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.